So, hello, welcome to Discover Dorico for October 2021. Sorry I got the details wrong on Facebook earlier. It, the typo. Um, so, you're welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, use this as an audio test. Make sure you can hear me and everything's okay and hopefully somebody will tell me in the chat if there's any problems. Uh, I'll be monitoring the chat as we go today, as always. Um, but yes, the, um, the today, um, I suppose this is the anniversary of, but Dorico is five. So back in October 2016, we first launched Dorico version one, uh, and now Dorico is five. So we'll be uh, picking a school for it soon. Uh, no. Um, so the first thing uh, I'd like to look at today and what we put on the, the title for this one is if you were to, if you were to describe to somebody else, what are the top five things why they would want to use Dorico features or you know or otherwise what are the things that you would say to somebody if they said I'm considering Dorico you know but you know what are the things that that, that you think we should you know that, that would be of use especially if you use another notation program you know why should I switch that kind of question so what I'm going to do to start off with is uh is show you those is that that's going to be a you know a very quick if you were just you know if somebody said I've, yeah, I've got five minutes show me you know five things these are possibly the five things that I would you know consider showing um however I'd like to hear from you as well so if you want to say oh no actually you know this is the thing that really you know makes Dorico useful for me that's what we'd like to know as well um, but because there's lots of other resources as well once we've done those I'm also going to look at uh, some of the tips Tuesdays and some of the other things that we've been doing as well so let's get started with uh, the top five first so top five things top five features think reasons that you might want to use Dorico let's have a look at some of those first so you can see my screen so uh, let's go so maybe the first thing is uh, is probably this option in the edit menu here, just a single word condensing, and I've set a shortcut for mine. Now the idea here with condensing, as you uh, as you are all aware, but of course is that if you've never seen Dorico before, the idea is that you're writing for you know all of these multiple instruments. So we've got two flutes, oboe, two clarinets, two bassoons, etc. So in setup mode over here. We have all the individual players, but as we had a second ago on the score, what we want to do is show a condensed score. So we want to put the two flute players together, the two clarinet players together, the two bassoons. And uh, even only a couple of years ago, what you would have to do is make an extra staff in any notation software and, you know, copy in them and use voices potentially. And, you know, it's a, a lot of manual work, so a lot of people didn't bother. So now in the, the edit menu here for condensing, if you just turn on the condensing option, and you might want to set yourself a shortcut for this, we can look at how we do those kind of things later. You can turn condensing on and Dorico will amalgamate those for you on the score. So this is just in this layout that I'm using. Dorico is saying, yeah, here we go. Here are the, the two flutes, the two clarinets. Now you can choose the labeling to be different if you want. So here you can see we've got different bassoon labeling here. We've got different horn labeling. Uh, and you can tell Dorico which labeling you want it to use. So what it's actually doing here is saying, you know, I can use the same uh, stems here, and I've got two very different things going on here, so I'm therefore going to split them, and you can choose um, what Dorico is going to do with the labeling at that point. So although that's, you know, uh, you can obviously go into you know all sorts of detail about the you know the extra condensing options that you can do how you can do it you know uh, that you can set different condensing regions in if different bars if you want to or partway through a bar if you want to um but i think the first you know the the first major thing really is that the condensing is such a big time saver uh, and so much more useful um, and of course you still have all your individual parts so we're not changing you know any of the individual parts or anything else but the the condensing option is there and um, you may also find that if you you have your notes and rest colors on then condensed music will often show up in grey so that you can then tell what you can and can't edit. So this I think is on by default so that you will tell that these notes are grey so you uh, need to uncondense to, uh, to be able to edit those but obviously there's only one oboe so uh, the oboe you'll be able to edit and do whatever you want. Um, good question Frank, where is the cake? I'm expecting any moment somebody, no? Nobody's going to bring me? Oh, okay, anyway. Um, so the next the next thing I want to look at, I think, uh, for me, is probably Divisi. So in this score, if I just um, scroll around a second, you can see we have some Divisi sections over here. 
So with the instrumentation we had um, earlier, we've got the, the violins here, for example, and the violas and the cellos. And I think, uh, you know, you can see here we've just got violin, one, two, viola, cello and double bass. Um, and in, if you don't want to scroll up and down the left and right, here's a, a divisi for the, cello, uh, for, for the cellos. Then you can go down here to page view and you can switch to galley view. And this maybe will explain uh, how the divisi works as well in, in quite a useful way. So here, as the piece starts here, we have all the individual instruments in galley view and it's just one long continuous stream of music now. Uh, <clears throat> and at any point, you can right click on the staff and uh, as we've done down here, so you can choose the staff, here's the, this cello staff here, and you can right click on it and you can say uh, staff and you can then say change to Visi or restore unison. Um, so the change to Visi is the first option you'd use to set a Visi point and what we've done here is we have a solo and then a, um, a, a glee altri section here for the um, for the cellos. So if I double click on that little signpost there we can see here's where we've got it set up. You can uh, adjust your labels accordingly um, and you can then write for two uh, individual uh, sections um, or solo and section as we've got here. So later on then in this piece if we just scroll around here we go here we've got the violins so the violins have separated here the violin twos are still uh, as they were the violas have separated here, and then towards the end over here of this little excerpt, the cellos do a different divisi where they've got a solo and two glialdry sections. Um, and what's also nice is that when you're doing these divisi sections, here for example where you've got a, the, the cellos, they're also playing pizzicato down here. So what Dorico is also doing in play mode is uh, you can split out those two so they're using effectively it's, uh, independent playback of voices it's called. Um, so you have the pizzicato here and you still have this playing uh, legato as you'd expect. So even you know the, the playback side of, of the divisi is also handled there. When you put this back into page view Dorico will work out where those divisi sections should be. So here halfway through the page although the solo here is here and the glialtri is here for the violin one. If I was to put a note here, maybe not that note, but if you put a note here, it's going to copy it because at this point they're actually all the same instrument. But as soon as you hit this divisi flag onwards, they are then uh, different sections or different desks or however you want to divide them up. So if you then go and look at the part, either by selecting a note and pressing W, or of course you can select it from your list here, and in the part, Dorico is also working out when it's doing the formatting. Here we've got the divisi section. In the part, it didn't need to be part way through uh, a system, so uh, it's put it at the beginning of the system. But it will automatically work out um, how many staves it will need to show the, the music that you're writing. So it's very easy to use. You just turn on Galley View. That's the easiest way to, for, for me, I think, to, to show it and see it. You can write for whatever you need, add in using the divisi section any staves you need. You go back to Unison when you don't want them anymore, and then Dorico will handle all of the layout of everything else. Um, there's a couple of questions. Oh, I can see Daniel's online. Hello, Daniel. Um, yep, there's a couple of questions about... Yes, <laughs> if you want to ask detailed questions, there's a, lo a lot in today. Yeah, um, send us a message to Daniel there or on the forum and we'll, we'll answer that. Um, so the next thing I just want to look at is cues. So um, in this uh, part up here, let's just uncondense this. So I said I'll uh, I set a shortcut for that because I do it quite a lot. So if you want to add cues in Dorico, it's not a, a plug-in or anything else. It's just a, a built-in feature in Dorico. So let's say we want to cue and put these flute notes in the clarinet so that they know what they're playing at the beginning. So I can choose a bar here. I, there is a button over here on the right-hand side for cues, this little ear. But I'm just going to press Shift-U and say flute. So I can choose flute one, and I've got my flute one cue. If I jump into the clarinet part, then you can see the cue is here. But these are dynamically grabbed from the flute part. So if I now want to make this cue a bit bigger, which I can do with Alt Shift left and right, which actually is a, another really useful feature in Dorico. We'll come on to that in a minute, but consistency of shortcuts. Anyway, um, so the flute part here, I can now you know, edit this, make the cue as long or short as I need. And what it's doing is dynamically grabbing more or less of the notes from the flute part as I need them and putting them in the clarinet part. So uh, on the score, when we flip back to the score here, you can just see we have a little signpost again to tell us that, we have, uh, that we've done that, that the cue is there. So you can also copy and paste these signposts. So if I click on flute one and alt click on flute two, you can see my shortcuts at the bottom of the screen here when I use a shortcut. Then uh, you can uh, automatically 
uh, copy those so that you now have the part exactly the same in the second clarinet part. Now the really useful thing about cues is that you don't have to worry about them later. You can you don't have to um, add them only at the end of the project and worry, you know, if the notes change in the flute part, well it doesn't matter, you know, if you change them here then they will automatically update in the queue um, because it's, they're dynamically grabbed at that point and of course transposed in this case for the clarinet. So cues, very very useful feature um, as far as I'm concerned for, uh, for, for things in Dorico. Um, I mentioned briefly the, the playback side of things for the, for the Divisi. Now Dorico must be one of the only notation programs really that has um, play mode where you've got, you know, you can edit things in here. And what's really useful is that, you know, when you're preparing mock-ups for things, you can edit in here to make the everything sound exactly as you want it. And there's there's a few options we'll look at for this today. Um, but the fact that, you know, the, the play mode is there and you've got all of that control over editing is really useful and it's all in the same project. So you don't have to make a copy of the project, you know, or use a plugin or anything else to make this work. It's all there and in the program. And we have our dynamics lane and, you know, various other controller lanes and those kind of things in here. So play mode is really useful. But what's also really useful with play mode is the playback templates. So actually the playback for this uh, score at the moment is using Note Performer. And that's as easy as just going to the playback templates and by default, you'll be uh, using probably the HSSE and HSO um, Pro template if you're using Dorico Pro or one of the other two if you have a different version of Dorico, but you can just switch. You just choose the option, press apply and close, and it will automatically switch the sounds to a different library. And so you can set up your own playback templates, and there's some available from VSL, there's some BBCSO ones, you know, there's various other options that you can uh, download. Have a look at our resources page and you can download uh, extra playback templates and make your own combinations of playback templates. And it's, it's just, it's a really powerful way of working and then uh, using playback. In fact, I'll, you know, I like this one. I'm going to um, play a little bit of this one while I read the comments for a second. I'll do for now. Um, I saw a couple of um, questions in there. Oh, was a playback was super quiet. Oh, so do I, do I get to play it again while I'm um, answering comments? Um, there was a comment about using um, BBCSO um, and how quick it loads. Well, it, that will partly depend on your system, but I think if you're using a lot of sample library type stuff, then uh, a lot of people use VE Pro to, to speed up those kind of things. So I'll, I'll play a little bit of, of this with um, some, some better volume, shall I? Let me know if this is better. I had to wait at least 30 seconds until everybody catches up, of course, with where I am to know if that was louder. Anyway, gonna be uh, uh, that looks like it sounds better. So, um, so the, uh, the 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 next thing that I I, well, I want to talk about during this session is really the flexibility in Dorico. Is is that the, there's lots of things you can do with insert mode and you know just general editing and that kind of thing that are 
the flexibility in Dorico for me is going to be my number five, which is, you know, top five things I tell people that you can just start writing music in Dorico and then when you need to change your mind later on you can it, you know it's very easy to you know move notes swap things you know all those kind of things so we're going to look at um, some of those as well um, and maybe out of that you'll you know pick one of your favorite things that, that you want to show other people um, now for the for the next part of this session what I want to do is is highlight that there's, there's all sorts of resources and things that you can use um, uh, for, for Dorico. If you have a look, for example, in, um, in blog.dorico.com, of course, there's our, now we are five, is our, our blog post that Daniel's written, that one's from yesterday. Um, there's also our tutorials, of course. Now, the tutorials button here in our um, blog website takes you to the Tips Tuesdays that Anthony does. So these are really, really useful little short tips on how to do all sorts of things. So um, and they're also available from our resources page. So if you go to uh, dorico.com forward slash resources, then there's a resources page where you can find all sorts of videos and, and various other things. Uh, and on here, there's also a link to the Tips Tuesdays. Now, I had a look at, for example, how many um, Dorico live streams we've done. And, um, you know, we were doing a top five, but there's there's more than five T50. Um, of the, the live streams, so Discover Dorico sessions uh, and those kind of things, because we started these in uh, 2017. Um, and of the Tips Tuesdays, there's 150 um, ish, 150 um, of these. So I can't use my five button anymore because there's far more than that. 150 tips on various things in Dorico. So what I'm going to aim to do now is show you as many as possible as I can of those Tips Tuesdays, because I feel that they sometimes get a bit lost and hidden. And even if you're an existing Dorico user, I think there's all sorts of things in here that you will go, oh, I didn't realize it did that, because if you missed that particular Tips Tuesday, you, you wouldn't have seen it. So the challenge is, how many can I get in in this session? How many do you know or don't know already? Um, what are your favorites um, of any of these? And if you want to go and find them, the idea is not that you learn them all from this video. I speak quickly anyway, apologies. In YouTube, there's a half speed setting. If you want to play this slower, if you want to press pause at any time, go and look one of these up. If you Google it, all of these, of course, if you Google Dorico and all of these things I'm about to tell you, our Tips Tuesday video will come up as well. Or just go to the blog, um, click on the tutorials button, and then you'll find these. So let's have a look at a whole bunch of these. Um, I'm not going to count them, so I hope nobody else is either. So the first one is, Generally navigating. At the bottom of the page down here, you can see there's a little box, I'm right down the bottom down here, there's a little box, marquee tool, and a hand tool. So when you're dragging with your mouse, if I click and drag, you get a box to select things. Uh, and this, this can be very useful. This is my default because of the type of mouse or trackpad that I generally use, uh, that's the default I use. If you press the other button over here for the little hand, then you can click and drag your page. Some people like this. If you've used other notation software, you might prefer this method. Depending on the type of mouse you have, it might be useful. If you press the letter H, you can toggle these two settings. So H now is giving me the marquee tool, and if I press H, now I've got the hand tool to click and drag. Or if you set your favourite, my favourite being the mar marquee tool, as you hold down shift, it temporarily switches to the other option. So now I've got the hand tool. If I let go, now I've got the marquee tool. If I press shift, now I've got the hand tool. So you can toggle your favourite option of those um, or temporarily do it with shift. So H or shift. If you want to move to you know, another part of this uh, piece and you think, oh, I know, I wanted to be at, um, let's say, bar 32. Uh, if you do Command or Control G and type the number you want and press Enter, then you'll be on that bar. And that bar is now the leftmost bar over here. So bar 32 that I just chose is over there. So that jump kind of go to bar option is really useful. If you want to choose a different music font, I said these are going to be quick, you can go to the engrave menu up here and you can go to the music fonts option. Uh, and you can choose one of the options. So our default font is Bravura. You won't have probably quite this many, but you will have Petaluma, which is our jazz font. Um, there's also various other ones. So if you have installed uh, a Finale, the latest version also has Smoofel fonts, the same as we use. So you can switch your piece to Finale Maestro if you want. Um, so you just press it, click on the button and Dorica will switch over. So now it's using different uh, fonts for the note heads uh, and all of that kind of thing. I'm just gonna press undo, go back to our font. Uh, if you are using our options dialogs, our options dialogs are really handy. So when you go into them, for I use shortcuts for these, they're all command shift something. So command shift E 
is uh, our engraving options. So when you're using one of our dialogues here, they all have little uh, pictures. Um, I'm not sure Daniel's quite, um, uh, I don't think he's quite liking the number of graphics we had to make for this now, but anyway, they all have graphics that you just click on and choose. But when you're looking for something, there's a little search option up here. So if you're looking for something to do with uh, altered base, base notes, somebody was asking the other day, altered base notes, and you choose this option here, it's now showing me the altered base note options. So there's a quick way to get into those. If you're in the chord symbols section and you're looking for something in particular that we haven't already put into a category here, press Command or Control F and you can search this page. So if you want to look, for example, for minor flat fifths, minor flat, here we go, here's the minor flat fifth option and you can choose diminished or you know um, whatever, whatever other version appearance of this diminished triad you like. So the search, Command F, it's a fairly standard in a lot of programs, uh, shortcut for search that one, will get you this little search so you can search the page and find the options uh, easily. Also, I don't remember if this is in the Tips Tuesday video, but these options dialogues can stay open. Leave them on another screen. If you have a second monitor, you don't have to keep opening and closing them if you don't want to. When you've set your favourite options in these dialogues, then you don't want to necessarily have to do it every time for every project. So use the Save as Default button at the bottom. It's in the bottom of all of these dialogues, Notation Options, Layout Options, the, there's a Save as Default at the bottom. So you can use the Save as Default and save your presets. We might have set a preset, but you can save your own so that your next project has all of the defaults that you want to use in there. Talking about setting options and, you know, and that kind of thing, if you're setting just you know, individual overrides for things, so let's say I've uh, chosen a note here and I want to add a bracket to it. And you can do that from the Properties panel. And a lot of people will use Command-8 or Control-8 to open the Properties panel. But even if the Properties panel isn't open, if you use Alt-8 or Option-8, then it automatically puts you in the search box, which is just behind my head. There we go. So over here, we've got a little search box here. So now you can type what you need. So for example, if you wanted a bracketed something, then you can choose a bracketed style here and it will then add the, the, the bracket to the note head. So that can be a very useful option because without doing anything else, option eight has opened the panel and got me into the search box so I can just type for the thing I'm looking for uh, and then press the little X when you don't want to be doing that search anymore. Um, one other thing which I'm not sure I've actually mentioned before, so um, let's look at it, but it's on the iPad. So I'm just quickly going to switch to the iPad version. Here's the iPad version, and I've got a, 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 an empty template here, uh, and I'm just going to press Create Project at the bottom. So now we have the, uh, you know, the as you'd expect, the Add Single Players, Section Players and Ensembles. On the iPad version, it will be coming to the desktop version, that's partly why I'm showing you as well. If you go uh, click on here, you've got all of your families of instruments that you can choose, you know, all of the, the various things. So you can choose the ensembles um, that you want to add. But there's also an ensemble builder. So in here, in the search box, you can type things like piccolo, for example, and put comma flute or, um, you know, you can say comma two flutes or you can say horn um, and things like that. Oh, no, not hen help if I could type. So you can add and build your own ensembles and there's a save button so you can save your own ensembles and your own combinations of instruments. You can also do things like type 2.2.3.2 which will give you a fairly standard woodwind section. Two flutes, two oboes, three clarinets and two bassoons. So you can then just say add and so you can add all of those all in one go. If I click on the ensemble button again there's also other options for example for brass. So when I start typing brass, it says, how about a 4230? And you can say, okay, maybe a 4231. I'll add a tuba to it and press add. So you can use some of those shortcuts. You can also uh, set up uh, the, you know, the, 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 the score how you want it, but you can set up, so you can set up your own ensembles in there. And the reason I'm showing you in there is it should be available on the desktop version at a date that I can't tell you and won't tell you today. So, so that's the ensemble builder, which at the moment is on the iPad. Back to the desktop version. Uh, now, I'm, I'll get rid of me. You don't really need to see me, do you? Um, so other things that I want to show you from the Tips Tuesday videos. Uh, one is to do with flows. So here we have, uh, when you start a project in Dorico, you get flow headers. Um, so you'll get the title, and then you'll get a uh, often a number and the title of the, the flow. And I'm making use of it in this one, but in many cases, people don't want that. So go into your Layout Options, which is Command-Shift-L. It's also available in Setup mode in the Setup menu. 
And when you click on flows, you can then say show flow headings never. But before you do that, you have your layouts down here. Use the select all button to select all of your layouts so that you can decide you never want the flow headings for your score or any of your parts. If you're turning it off, you probably want to turn it off for all of them. So that's where you would, uh, where you would do that one. Now in this case, I'm not going to do that because I'm going to leave it on. Because one of the other options that's really useful for flows is being able to import other music into this project as another flow. So here we can see this piece ends on page 5 over here. It's just uh, one excerpt. If I go File Import Flows, I can choose another Dorico file, like this one. And I think I've shown probably shown one of these in, in a previous session. I can now say when you import this flow, uh, I've only got one flow in this file, in this Dorico file, that's fine, and do I want to create all new players or merge? So I'm going to merge this time. So what it's going to do is I've already got some similar instruments in this uh, project that I have in the one I'm importing. So it's not going to create a whole new set of players, it's just going to merge them with the ones I had. So it's going to think for a minute and add them in as a second flow. So in setup mode now, I have two flows. I've got flow one, which was the piece we were looking at to start off with, and flow two, which is called movement three, part of the uh, Brandenburg, Brandenburg five. And you can see that when I choose each flow, Dorico's kept track of which players existed in each flow. So here are the ones from flow one, here are the ones from flow two. It's grouped these extra ones at the bottom down here, and it's um, merged the other ones so that they're the same. So that it's now sorting out the parts for me as well. So for flute one, here we have flute one, and then uh, movement two. And when we go to, uh, what else should we have? Oh, let's just have flute two. When we look at flute two, then it's playing here, but it's tacit automatically in movement two. So Dorico is sorting out the parts, and you can choose the flow at the bottom here, and you can then choose which instruments exist in it. So if you now in the Brandenburg want to add a double bass, you just tick the box, and it will add that in that uh, instrument into here. Really, really flexible way of working, uh, and really, really very useful. You can also reorder these flows. So here is my score when uh, we've got the second flow is movement three, and if I just drag this and put it at the beginning, then it's going to resort the flows so that now that one's at the beginning, and then this one happens later. You can also duplicate flows. So if you said this one that we're working on now, let's just call this, um, oh, I thought I'd we'll call it Delius. Um, you can right click on it and you can duplicate a flow. So if you needed to make a copy of it, then you can, you can duplicate that. So let's duplicate the flow. So now we'll have three flows at the bottom here. And then if you wanted to you only use part of this one, you can select any way you like. I'm just going to select this number one here, this uh, rehearsal mark one. You can go to the right menu and you can go to split flow. So it's going to split at this point the music into two flows. So now in setup mode, once it's had to think about that, I now have three deliuses because it split them. So this one now only contains the very first few bars, and this one, because I selected the number one, contain goes from there. So I can now you know, delete one if I want to, or, you know. So if you want to chop up some of the music from some of the flows, or duplicate them, use them later, you can import them, you can export them. Flows can be useful for all sorts of things. Um, you know, and, and creating very distinct pieces of music if you need to with different instrument, instrumentation, no problem. And like we said, adding and removing players from flows that they don't need to be in. So if you need to just choose a flow, untick a player, uh, or add another player, then you can do, no problem. So I didn't put flows in, in my top five. Um, it was close, but, uh, but, but I didn't, because they're, they're very flexible and very useful for all sorts of things. Um, now, if you, uh, while we're in setup mode here, let's look at a couple of other things that are also useful from our Tips Tuesday videos. So when you're dealing with individual players and instruments, so we have our list of players and they all contain instruments. So if you need to, uh, for example, I don't know why, why you would in this case, but if you needed to uh, move the clarinet uh, instrument to the oboe player, you can just drag it like that, and you can see I'm expanding the little card here 
and Dorico has now moved, so we now have a clarinet and oboe part. So here we've now got clarinet and oboe part that we could choose as well. So you can drag and drop things. That can be useful for doubling, or if you, especially for percussion, when you suddenly just realise you don't have enough percussion players, or you have more percussion players than you realised, you can just drag and drop those, and Dorico will automatically sort the parts out for you. You can also change an instrument at any time. So if this B flat clarinet needs to be a clarinet in A, you can just click on the little arrow here, do change instrument. This is one of the other tips Tuesdays where you, I would just normally start typing and choose the clarinet that I need and press change instrument and it would change that for me. I'm going to press escape this time, don't need to do that today. But change instrument, that was another one of the tips Tuesdays. Regenerating missing instrumental parts. So if you've created layouts down here, and maybe as you've been working, you know, and I, I've seen um, from people's questions on um, on Facebook, for example, people have said, oh, you know, I, I don't seem to have a part for something. Um, you can you can easily, if you need to create extra parts and extra layouts, but maybe you accidentally deleted one you didn't need. Um, so you can also, in here in Setup uh, menu, you can go Create Default Part Layouts. So Dorico will make sure then that every player who exists on the left-hand side has at least one part on the right hand side over here as well. So another useful tip that Anthony put in. Um, there's also um, options for making a player list. So when you're using tokens, if you want to. So if I, I, I won't go through this one right now, but if you if you need a player list, then uh, search for create a list of players using a token or the Dorico player uh, token. And you can uh, add that. So you just add one text token and it will add you a list of players. Um, there's also lots of options that you can do in Dorico with, when you're making flexible layouts for you making things like worksheets. So this uses uh, you know, some bits of, uh, of flows and maybe you know, individual flows for things and also some bits of uh, engrave mode. So in here we have a worksheet here so you can see that in engrave mode we've used the frames tool here and we've got uh, various text frames uh, and we've got some music frames here so you can make uh, worksheets. Um, and although um, I, I'm sure it was a Tips Tuesday somewhere, but I can't remember when, when exactly it was and where it is on my list. But if you don't want to see all of these, yes, you can switch into write mode. If you don't want to see all of the, the frames and the guidelines and things like that. But also if you press the little tilde key, or it might be a slash key if you're on Windows, a, a backslash key, then you can just temporarily, as you've got that key held down, you can hide all of those guides so you can just see what your worksheet looks like. And then when you let go, those guides will all come back so you can see all the, the frames and the, the boxes and that kind of thing so that you could see what you're editing. So all of these, of course, you know, are they're, they're editable text regions and we've got the, the music regions in here. And you can tell in setup mode here that we've got individual flows for each of the sections of music. So another very useful um, way of using flows. If you've created layouts, and now we haven't in this particular case, but if you've created layouts that you want to reuse, create them as a master page down here. So our master page templates that exist down here, you can create your own. There's you know plus icon as well as the edit icons down here to add extra master pages. So if you want to create your own templates, um, but they're called master pages in here, then you can create those so that you have consistent layout for all of your scores and consistent, more importantly, consistent layout for all of your parts. What's also very useful is then in the master page se section down here, we also have import and export options. So you can import a master page set. And if you've in this project, you've made a master page, you can export that so that you can use it in other scores. So when you've spent all the time putting your logo in and you know where you would like the composer, you know, the lyricist, anything else, arrange your text, um, the copyright, you know, all those kind of things, you can set those up as a master page set. So your first page and of course your default um, pages for, for everything else that exists here and you can then import and export those so that you can use them in another project, which can be very useful um, uh, just in, for consistency so that you have the, the same look between all of those. Um, moving on to other Tips Tuesdays. How many have I got through so far? I'm not actually looking, have I? I'm not looking at the chat, sorry. Hang on a second. Oh, it's okay. I think Daniel's on it. And the instant print preview tip was the 2nd of June, 2020. I'm slightly worried now Anthony's actually watching me do this because um, these are all his... Anyway, let's carry on. Let's get a move on. So uh, I don't need this worksheet. Let's say in this piece here... Yeah, we'll use this one. So let's say in this piece here, 
Um, we, I'm just going to delete some of the music at the end. Let's highlight this, delete it a bit more maybe. What you will sometimes find in Dorico is that you will maybe get some blank bars at the end here. And uh, one option that you want to do is you know, re remove some of these blank bars. Um, so if you just click on a bar line, or actually you can click in a number of places, but I'm going to select this bar line and use Shift B for our bars pop over, you can just write Trim for Trim Flow. And it will then get rid of any of the extra music at the end. It also exists in the right menu here for Trim Flow. So if you need to use that, you can trim off any extra bars. In fact, I'm going to do it um, quick on that one. So you can trim off any extra bars, but also... Um, the option, ah, no, I don't have, uh, do I have a suitable part with this in it? You may find sometimes that your part is going to end part way through a line. Um, so if you have, um, no, should I do it in this one? Yes, I will. So let's just not show multibar rest and see if that forces what I need for this particular part. I should have checked this one. Uh, not in this particular case. Sometimes you'll end part way through uh, a system and that's because Dorico, if you're only doing, you know, the, the very first thing you enter in Dorico is just going to be probably an open meter bar or if you've just entered one bar you don't want it to stretch all the way across the page so there's an option in layout options in note spacing for only justify final system in flow when more than 50 percent full which means dorico is only going to justify to the end here if it's got you know if it's got enough music in there to do it or if it's got enough um, bars if it's got to 50 percent uh, of across the page then it will actually do that um, so you may want to untick this. If you've got you know, just a couple of bars and you want them to stretch, then you can untick this option in layout options, note spacing, only justify final system in flow. You could adjust the 50%, but you can also just uh, untick that if you want to. Um, if you want to fix the number of bars, now I'm not sure you do in this particular one, but let's do it anyway. Um, if you go into layout options, and you'll notice when I'm in layout options for these, I'm in only adjusting the one layout that I'm on. So because I've selected this flute bar here, I happen to be on the, the layout that, um, that's chosen here. So uh, you're generally going to be on the, the right layout that you want to use. In stays and systems for casting off, you can set a fixed number of bars per system. Now this is normally more of an either jazz or studio type option really. But if I apply that to this part and just move that out of the way for a second, then this part will reformat itself so that it has four bars. Here we go, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. So every... Um, uh, every system now has a uniform set of bars. Now, I'm not sure in this particular case um, it, it's a, uh, the, the best example, but there's the option if you need it just to fix the number of bars per system. Uh, and like I said, it's often used in uh, film and studio. Um, if you have a favourite font that you want to use, so a favourite text font you want to use, you can also set that. So we have one called Academico that we normally use. If you go into the Dorico Preferences, so Edit Preferences on PC, or the Dorico and Preferences on a Mac, I was using the shortcut for it, then here you can set the default text font family. So you can choose your favourite text font that you want to use for the, de the, the default text for your projects in the Preferences. Um, if you have a... This is uh, not the best example of this. I'm going to use it anyway because it's flexible enough to use anywhere. If you choose any staff and you want it to be slightly bigger or slightly smaller, then you can just go right click and you can say staff size and you can choose a different staff size as a percentage. And there's also a custom option. So if you can ping, there we go, you can choose a, uh, a custom option as well if you want to. If you're thinking, actually, I'd like that, it's very useful, that one, for example, if you've got a piano and singer, that kind of thing, and you just want to make the singer staff slightly smaller in a PVG part, that can be very useful. But there is also another option, um, and have a look in the, the Tips Tuesday video for if you've got one page, you just want to change the staff size slightly just to reduce it to make it fit on the page, you can set a, a system break, and then you can set the, the, the page of the, um, the music, you set that page of music, or from that point on, to have a different staff size. So check out the Tips Tuesday video if you want to find that one. There's also an option, in fact, well, let's use this uh, flute part again. If it is a kind of a you know studio type uh, setup and you want some blank staves at the end, then in layout options there is a um, in page setup 
there's an option for fill the frame with blank staves. So the end of the last flow, press apply, it will just fill this with blank staves, he says. There we go. And you can choose if you want the clef or not and, uh, and those kind of options, but uh, there's a neat option there. Now, Dan Anthony, can you tell me, is that actually a Tips Tuesday or have I just made that one up? I don't know. I'll wait and, and come back in a minute and see if Anthony tells me if that's actually a Tips Tuesday or not. If not, maybe it's next week's. Anyway, uh, it's a useful tip nonetheless. Now, let's go back to our score. There's a whole bunch of things here that I would like to show you to do with things like dynamics. Um, the first one, though, is, in fact, I'm going to do it in, where's the, um, you, you can click on these flows and jump straight to the, the piece you want. So they're very useful markers, those. So in the, the, the Delius we have here, uh, let's use the strings for a, for a change. Um, if you are the kind of person who likes to use a mouse, then I won't hold it against you right now. But in the preferences, there is an option for note input and editing uh, where you can choose to allow multiple items to be created with the mouse. What does that do? Well, when you've chosen, for example, a dynamic over here, if you're using these with a mouse, then when you click on a dynamic from here, then it would normally find the note that you've got selected and it, or the staff you've got selected and it would put it there. Could be, could be useful, could be what you wanted. If it isn't what you wanted, if you actually wanted to say, you know, I've got nothing selected right now, and uh, where was I? I was, I was using the dealers, wasn't I? Yes. If you want to put some dynamics over here, so nothing is selected at all, and I choose a dynamic, now it's, it's loaded on my mouse cursor, I can click them into, and it was multiple locations. So if you prefer to, oh, that's one, that one, I don't need both of those. If you would prefer to click them in with the mouse, then you can do that. And then when it's loaded, you see now this is attached to my mouse. If I just press escape, then it's now unloaded again. So that might be a use useful option for some people if you prefer doing that with a mouse. If you're creating dynamics on multiple staves, then what you can also do, of course, is just choose both staves like this. And when you use the popover, shift D, then you enter a dynamic, then it will enter that into both staves at the same time. So that in some cases may be more useful because it's more accurate. It's going to put them in the same rhythmic position. Um, so there, it means that when one of these needs to change, so let's say this one only needs to be an F, because they are linked, then you, if you want to, you can have Dorico link them both together and change them both at the same time, but they don't have to be, so you have options for those as well. But they, that might be a, a useful option. And what's the difference between grouped and linked? I think that was one of the, uh, the videos as well. So it, these are, in fact, look at it in the, here in the, the strings. Here, these are all linked. And if you imagine a big letter L, big straight up and down, these are linked. And if they're grouped, then it would be, for example, if I chosen the bassoon part here and say, you know, classic P hairpin MF, these are grouped. So I don't know, a G is a round letter and I'm drawing round the dynamics. I, I don't know, I'm clutching at straws here. Um, but the, these are grouped and this is a big L for linked dynamics. Uh, and you can choose, you know, the, some default uh, preferences in Dorico as to how you would like your your dynamics to be grouped or linked by default or not, but they can be very useful. There's also a useful option you can set as a shortcut. Um, so if you go to Edit Preferences on PC or Dorico Preferences on a Mac and go to Key Commands, search for Intensity. And in the Note Editing section, there's Decrease and Increase Dynamic Intensity that you can add your own shortcuts to. So I've added a quick example. So if I choose this one here and say increase dynamic intensity, it goes from P to MP. And if I do it again, it goes to MF. And if I decrease, it goes down. So, well, I could have done that with the popover, couldn't I? And, you know, just chosen a new dynamic. Yes, I could. But if you can do this with multiple dynamics. So if I now choose a couple of dynamics here, which are uh, quite different, and then use increase intensity, and then now this goes MP hairpin to F or FF, from MF, or if I decrease, then it's decreasing one or more all at the same time. So it can be very useful for a range of dynamics to say, in this bit, you know, maybe some people are playing at mezzo forte and some people are playing forte, but just everybody go up a notch. That can be also a very useful option uh, for that. When you've got things like hairpins, you can change the gradual style. So there's a default option in the engraving options. Uh, again, search for, you know, search for your dynamics and then you've got gradual dynamics. And you can choose the default appearance of gradual dynamics to be a hairpin, a cresc, uh, a cresc with a dot or crescendo. So you can choose your default, what happens when you 
for, for, for your gradual dynamics. You can also, of course, in the properties panel at the bottom, you can choose what you would like the gradual style to be if you want to do an override. So if you just want to override this particular one case. Bear with me a second. So, um, and I know uh, this is, uh, there's a couple of people uh, always wonder about this, um, Vili. Um, the reason there's a toggle and then a choice is so that you can tell you've overridden it. So when you come back to this one later and you say, why is this one Cresc or not Hairpin? You can tell what you've chosen and you can tell here, at right at the bottom with this little dot, that it's an override a little toggle switch. So if I just toggle that off, it goes back to the default that's set in engraving options. So that's why in some cases you have to put the toggle on before you choose the option. You can tell if you've overridden it. Um, the, so you can choose the appearance of the gradual style. If you have a, a dynamic you want to add to the middle of a tied note, because of course if you select a, anywhere, if you know, I select this middle note here, uh, this one comes up a lot where somebody says, how do I add a dynamic in the middle here? Because if you add a dynamic normally, then you're going to get it at the beginning, and that's not where I want it. So the answer is you put the carrot on first, carrot line, so just probably double click on the staff. You've got your ruler across here. At the bottom, you can set um, what your rhythm grid is set to. So this ruler or rhythm grid is what it's set to. You can move this around with the mouse. So uh, move it around with the mouse. Move it around with the arrows that you can see on screen that I'm actually using. Uh, and then if you use the popover now, so if I put this somewhere, let's say here, and use the popover and say mezzo piano, then I can enter the dynamic exactly there. If I was to use a hairpin as well, then when I press enter, then I'll get that, but when I press the space bar, I can now elongate that uh, hairpin to make it longer or shorter. So entering dynamics in the middle of a tie chain, uh, start the carrot line first. Uh, there's also, similarly, if you're using the carrot line, you can split a tie chain. You don't have to split it on each individual note. So you can untie things if you want to. Um, but you don't need to. So if you click on a note and press U, they'll all untie. But if you just want to split it somewhere, like here, so you can use the arrows again to move this to wherever you need, and when you press U, then it will split those notes. So it was one long tie chain over several bars, uh, and using U, I can split that. So if I press undo and move it somewhere else, then I can split that and uh, decide I want to split it somewhere else. So that can be a very useful option again, using the carrot line, both the dynamics in the middle of tie chains and to use the scissors tool. Back to some dynamics. I've got a, a hairpin here. There is a flared end option. So if you want to use your, the flared end of the hairpin, then you can do. Just choose that from the properties panel down here. If you go to the engrave section, and then go to the properties panel. Then there's also flare size. So, you know, if you'd like particularly large uh, flares, uh, or if you, you know, if you would like to, oh, no, I want you to change the width as well. So there you go. So you can change the, um, the, the size of your flares if you want to. Uh, there's also down here, there's a uh, Poco a Poco. And you can also then choose, is the modifier going to be above or below, or is it going to be in the middle? Which actually, in this case, is going to bring me on to another one which is that I can use similar shortcuts, Alt, Shift, Right, to extend or contract notes and dynamics. So here's uh, the, the option for doing that with dynamics. Where Poco Poco sits, for example, is also, of course, in engraving options. So very similar, you can search for it in there if you want to, if you have a preferred option, and of course, use the save as default. And, um, when you're doing uh, anything with dynamics, this, of course, is just the graphical um, editing, really, that, of how this is displaying, as well as where it's attached to on the staff, but it's the, you know, the, the, the graphical changes. In play mode, if you've got something selected, when you switch to play mode, it will expand automatically to show you here um, the instrument that we're looking at. And if you open the dynamics um, lane at the bottom here, then you can also see, and you can edit, how much that hairpin is actually going to sound um, and there's also, you can use the pencil tool, so if it's a flared end and it means you know you want your dynamic to actually do that and kind of not be a, just a, a line but you can draw it in with a pencil tool, then you can do that too in the dynamics lane. And what Dorico is actually doing here is it's using either the velocity, if that was appropriate at this point, and it's not because it's a tied note, or it's using a, a CC option, so this is using CC11 and it will be drawing in the CC data. But all you have to worry about if you want to uh, I mean, you can edit the CC data, but you only need to change the dynamics option and Dorico will sort out the other bits for you. 
So, is anybody keeping a tally how many tips this is yet? No, it, it'll be something that ends in five, I'm sure. Sure it is. Um, so, back to right mode. Another tip is when you're editing lots of things, press F if you want to flip them. So flip them to the other side of the staff. The, the staff excuse me. Choose a note if you want to flip stem, just use F. That is a quick tip. And that one's all the way back from Dorico to something? Yeah, 2.2, I think. You can lengthen the short notes, as I said before. So if you choose these notes, a bit sinister, um, Alt, Shift, left and right. I very, very, very rarely enter ties because I just use Alt, Shift, left and right and extend and contract notes. So if I was entering a note, let's say, oh, let's go to the violas up here. So if I enter a note here and then I want to want it to go on into the next bar then alt shift right and it will move it will go on by it's the same rhythm grid that i had before which is set in the bottom corner down here so it will move on by the rhythm grid so alt is move left and right and alt shift is extend left and right well extend to the right obviously or contract to the left um so Alt shift, really, really useful. I use that one quite a lot. I noticed on uh, Facebook when I talked about what are your top five things and people were talking about shortcuts and things, one person said one of their favourites was also things like moving uh, music to another staff. So if you've got a note chosen and you choose, uh, say, Alt M, then it will go to the staff below. It's based on the cross staff beaming N for November and M for mother shortcuts. But if you use Alt, then it's move. So it moves them to the staff above and the staff below. And although it's not, uh, in fact, it, th those ones exist in paste special as well as move to staff above, move to staff below, default shortcuts. There's also duplicate to staff above and below. And you can set shortcuts for these and I really heartily recommend it. So if you have a note selected, and you then use your shortcut for duplicate to staff below, it will obviously do exactly that. But it also works for all sorts of things. So if you have a dynamic and you want to duplicate it to the staff below, you can do that. You don't need to do anything else. If you have a... What was the example somebody said the other day? Pits or something, I think, that they wanted to enter? I don't remember. Um, but if they had a playing technique, for example, and then you want to duplicate it to the staff below, it, it just it's a really, really handy shortcut. I don't actually use staff above very often. I must obviously work from the top down, but there is a duplicate to staff above as well, and they're really handy. And one of the things I really like, even versus copy and paste, is that because it's duplicate, it's putting it in exactly the same rhythmic position. So it's not going to uh, cause you any problems later on with condensing, for example, where the two items are an eighth note different in each part because you when you clicked to copy and paste them they're not in exactly the same place so it's just a really um, useful I think option is the duplicate so go into your key commands search for duplicate and uh, duplicate to staff above or below set yourself a shortcut for that um, there's also a couple of other kind of useful similar kind of I suppose it's a copy type command really isn't it uh, let's say the oboe part here which I'm going to select with command or control on PC and the flute part here there's an edit paste special command for swap. So it will it's like a double copy and paste. It cuts out both bits, swaps them around and puts them back in again. So swap can be a very useful option. And if you think you might want to use that a lot, set yourself a shortcut for it. It doesn't have a default one. Uh, you can also, let's just have a look in a different file. Um, you can swap music between voices as well. So to be honest, I think I probably use this one more often when I've made a mistake. Um, so if we have a look in this one, go to bar 40, um, here I've entered the music but actually I've used the wrong voice. There's two voices and they're the wrong around and I've now got rests in random places and that kind of thing. So if I right click on here and I go to voices I can swap voice contents. So it's a similar kind of swap command except particularly for voices so now it's put them back the right way around. Um, and if you turn on no, uh, the, the voice colours option, then you'd see that the, the, the voices were the wrong around, and that, that may also give you a clue. But the swapping between voices is very useful. Also, of course, paste into voice. So if you're copying from somewhere else, when you're doing a paste in the paste special, there's paste into voice as well. And this might be, I suppose, um, well, you might use this as a right-click as well. So if you copy something, when you right-click and do paste special, then you also have paste into voice here. So you can paste into a particular voice if that's useful which includes slash voices, which is probably where I personally use it most often. Select some notes from one staff and paste it, that rhythm then, as a, a slash into a slashed voice. 
Um, if you are doing things like, yeah, let's do this one. If you make a selection, and at the, in the right menu, there are some options for editing duration. So things like double note duration. So if you've written something out and you've got the note durations wrong, you don't have to rewrite them. In some cases, you can just you know uh, turn on insert mode and use the, the, the normal shortcuts to, to change the notes. But sometimes, especially if the notes are differing uh, note lengths, then you just want to use halve or double note duration to correct something that you've done. So the halve and double are, uh, can be very useful in there. Um, if you're on kind of note lengths and that kind of thing, in fact, let's just go back to this one for a minute. Uh, I have... Hmm. Do we have any blank? No, I'll use a blank one. So let's say new flow. Might regret this. I don't need all the instruments. I only need one of them, but there you go. Anthony's just said in the, in the chat, all of these editing commands are some of my favourite features of Dorico. There they are. Yeah, yeah, it's really handy. Uh, oh, yes, I shouldn't have done it in this one, should I? It doesn't matter. Right. So now I've got some more Delius and I've got a blank flow. Good. I have a blank flow with a fleet part. So uh, let's say we are going to have some time to start off with and we are going to have some bars. And we'll go in this flute part, we'll go to play mode. Um, and what I want to do is uh, look at some, some other editing type stuff. So in our last flow, make sure you've got the right flow selected. I'm just going to drag in a MIDI part. So I'll drag this one on and drop it in the flute part here. So um, some of the options are particular to do with uh, MIDI data. And instead of playing any of this in live, um, I'm just going to drag in this MIDI part instead. So if you've got uh, MIDI parts that you've brought in, they may or may not be correct. It may be that you need to use the requantize option. So for example, if I requantize this and I turn off fill gaps, then you know you sometimes may import MIDI that you know, may, might not be the cleanest. So requantize can be really useful because you can fill gaps and things, you can choose different note values, you can press OK and it will requantize the, the music and make it a bit cleaner. Sometimes you want the opposite, you want to choose some of these notes and you need to use requantize. You can see I use this a lot because I've set myself a shortcut for it and you might want to choose a different option here and, uh, and requantize them that way. I think that might be maybe an enharmonic change is needed on that one. So requantize is a really useful option. There's also some other functions which I have a sneaky feeling that Dan, yeah, Dan Cried is just, he's ahead of me. Thanks, Dan. Um, sometimes you want to use things like the right menu, edit duration, and extend to next note. So what it's doing is it's filling in, basically it's removing all the rests. It's extending all of those uh, notes to the next note. Now, maybe you didn't want the whole passage. Maybe it was only in that bar. It depends on the selection you've got, but it would extend all of those to the next note. The other option is if you've got, for example, um, let's take this one. If you have either imported, been editing, or been playing live, or anything else, and your notes have ended up something like uh, maybe this, where you've got lots of overlaps. So if you've played in a piano part maybe and you've got lots of overlaps and that kind of thing, you can just select all of the notes and you can go to the right menu and you can go to edit duration and you can say shorten to next note. So it will make sure that each note doesn't overlap with the next one. So it will tidy those kind of things up. So like I said, for piano parts and that kind of thing where you've got overlaps because you used an expression pedal or it's just the way I sometimes play, that, that kind of thing, it can clean it up and then you can add the pedal line, which of course will give you the same effect in the end, but you need the cleaner notation to start off with. So that's also another really useful one. And of course, although you don't have it in the desktop version yet, um, if you are using an iPad, then um, in the iPad version, in the properties section at the bottom down here, we also have, as well as our mixer, we have an editor. So if I just jump into another project, like that one will do, then when you make a selection here, you're also going to see that at the bottom. So you don't have to jump into play mode every time to make some of these changes. You can do it uh, at the bottom down here and edit individual notes um, in while you're still in write mode. Will it come into the desktop version in the next version? I should think so. Um, 
When is that? Oh, sorry, I can't tell you. Um, uh, oh, yes. Uh, if you have, uh, let's say, this note, and you actually wanted it to just be longer um, for some reason, just for, for one note, but not all the way to this note, there's also, I mean, this is one you probably want a shortcut for. You want to, to use it quick. Extend to end of selection. Because I've selected that note and the next bar, it's just going to extend that note to wherever I'd selected to. Might be a nice little thing that somebody wants to use. It was another Tips Tuesday. Uh, force duration, and in some meters, so let's let's say 12.8, uh, when you enter things like um, a half note, he says pressing whole note, when you enter things like a half note, you will, Doric will say, right, we're in 12.8, so I'm going to write it like this. It may be that you don't want to write it like that. You actually, for whatever reason, wanted a half note. So you should, in that case, press O for force duration. You'll see the little G clamp over here on the left-hand side light up. And force duration could be very useful then because you can say, for example, when you're entering things, I want to specifically say that it's a half note or, you know, or anything else that you choose. You will need to change the note length. So, for example, then I just made it smaller temporarily and made it longer again. Um, or you can, you know, add a rhythm dot or, you know, remove it, that kind of thing. Make it longer, make it shorter again to change it, but then you have forced the duration. And now when you select other notes, you'll see that they are not forced. And when you select that note again later, you'll see that it is. So if you ever want to put that back, you can just press O or that little button and it will put it back to be notated in the meter that you're currently in. So that's forced duration. Another tiny little thing is when you're using slash note, uh, slash notes, so uh, sorry, grace notes, slashes or non-slashed. So over here, we've got a little grace note, and it says slash is the grace note option. So if I hold down, press slash on my keyboard, then if I entered a note, then oh, I don't really want it as a half note, but thanks anyway. Uh, so I then get a slashed grace note. Marvelous. Undo. If I hold down Alt and press the slash key, then over here that tiny slash in that button has disappeared. So now. I won't get a slashed version. So you now, of course, playback will be uh, be different for both of those, depending on whether or not it has a slash on the tail. And in the properties panel at the bottom, you can choose the grace note type later on as well if you want to. But alt, when you're inputting things, will let you toggle between them. So alt and slash will toggle between those two options. That's another Tips Tuesday. Um, if you've made a mistake, I've made a few today, uh, and you want to insert music, then um, hopefully you're all aware, but maybe you want to tell your friends is about insert mode. Hold down, uh, hold down, press I for insert mode. You get these little chevrons. You get this little icon uh, lit up over here. And now it's more like typing into Microsoft Word when you've missed out a letter. Anything I now type, so if I choose a note value over here on the left, and I enter some notes, it will push all of the other notes out of the way. It'll keep going. It's a bit high, but it'll keep going and push all of those other notes out of the way. And if I press delete, then it will bring them out. So it will delete those notes and pull all the other ones back again. So insert mode can be really useful when you've made a mistake. You can use it for editing as well. So if you're selecting notes and changing the note value, then you'll sometimes say, oh, it disappeared. Where did the other one go? If you hold, press I for insert and then change it, then it will keep both of those notes and make space for them as well by pushing everything else in that voice out of the way. Um, if you need to, if you're entering some music and then you're copying it to another part, for example, for flute two. So here's flute one. Let's say we were now copying this to flute two. We could copy it down, but when we're putting in the new pitches instead, you can turn on the carrot line, press L for lock duration, uh, and then you can just play, for example, on your MIDI keyboard, you can play the new pitches, and you're not having to change the note values at all. It's just entering the new pitches. So that's lock duration. That's the little lock symbol over here, or the letter L. If you then decide, actually, this was supposed to have a pickup, then in our popover, where you can type, for example, I want this to be in 6-8 or 9-8 or otherwise, you can also say, I do want 12-8, but comma 3, and it will give you three beats, so the uh, beats shown at the bottom, so three of those will be the pickup bar, so now I have a pickup into 12-8. Um, so there's also some other little tips in the um, uh, in the Tips Tuesday video about that one. So convert the first bar of a flow to a pickup bar. If you want to Google that one, you'll find some other options. Um, you can also change the tonality system. So in Dorico over here, you've got 12 EDO and 24 EDO. 
So if you want to change it, you can choose 24 EDO and then put in the key signature. So for example, if you've got a note selected over here, if you say I want it to switch back to 12, if I say I want 24 EDO and then shift K and type, for example, atonal. So you can put that in now. This is now going to stay in 24 EDO. So choose that for, so I, I made the selection where I want it to go from. I've chosen what I want to do, switch to 24 EDO, and then I've entered a key signature of atonal so that um, I, it's now an atonal key signature and I have three quarter tone sharps and flats or make your own tonality system. And I know there's also a discover session that I did on making 19 EDO. Um, so uh, a couple of options there you can look at, Tips Tuesday or the discover session. If you want to create um, time signatures and key signatures on a single staff, let's just go back to, oh, this is gonna be a mess. Sorry, Frank, I know you like Delius, but, oh, it's okay, we can do it on this one. We can ruin, <laughs> ruin the Brandenburg instead. So if you want to do a time signature or a key signature just on one staff, so if I do Shift M, type the one I want, so let's say we want this one to be in seven, eight, and press Alt Enter, then I can get a different key signature for the flute. Uh, if I go to somewhere else, let's say the, what did, um, Michael say, Michael Rahnick said, oh yes, I'm making a, a cadenza just in the left hand of the piano. Yes, you can do. You just do uh, shift M and put X, alt enter on the lower part of the piano, or you can change the key, so key for them. So shift K for key signature, and you can say, I would like you to be in eight flats and alt enter means that it will now put the key down here, but not for the right hand. So Alt-Enter is when you want the, your carrot line on a, an individual staff, and then Alt-Enter will apply that popover just to one staff, which can be very useful for time and key signatures. Um, there's also, um, I think this was one Lily really, uh, mentioned she really liked, was uh, the advanced time signatures option in the popover. There's all sorts of these ones, but uh, a quick one, for example, is that you can do, um, you know, add things like this into the popover. We're going to say Alt Enter, maybe put it just on one staff. And Dorico can display that for you. Oh, here we go. It's moved it also to the other line. Cool. Um, but you can also, oh, I've got all sorts of time going on here. Oh, I really shouldn't have done that. Um, you've also got options where you can use square brackets if you want them. So if you wanted to use square brackets so that you're hiding what's actually showing, so you're just showing, what did I do, two plus three plus four. So if, you're only, if you want nine, eight, but you, know, you, um, you want to show it as nine, eight so instead of the divisions, then you can do that too. Uh, there's also all sorts of other advanced time signature options with the popover. Um, so have a look at the Tips Tuesday um, video for that. Um, one I know I've used, oh dear, is it? Um, yeah, I'll do it in this file. Why not? If you have multiple instruments, like we do here, and you want to input notes into multiple instruments at the same time, so let's say here we've got a blank. Uh, sorry, Delius. Sorry, Frank. Uh, if you use shift and down arrow to extend the carrot, then if you play one note, you'll get that one note in all three staves, and note that two of them are in bass clef, and so my keyboard was quite um, quite high. Uh, and if you play three note chords, then you'll get one note that I played from the chord in each of those staves. Uh, if you play four notes, then Dorico will also uh, put all those four notes onto the three, the three staves and split them all up for you. So it can be a very quick way of entering notes into multiple staves, which can also be really useful if you're then using it with, condense, uh, with condensing, because you can enter what you need, for example, for the horns, and have Dorico automatically condense that for you. Um, if you want to add intervals to things, so let's say... Uh, so it should be a piano part, really, but never mind. Let's um, we'll do it in the, the strings, and they're not, they're not going to like it. You can use the intervals popover. So select some notes, press Shift I. Now you can just do simple three, third, fifth, sevenths, and you can add chords that way. But in the intervals popover, you can also do things like minor thirds, and you can say minus five, so it'll do a minus five, uh, a fifth below. But you can also say things like you'd like um, uh, diminished intervals, and you know, so diminished minor, above, below, that kind of thing. So you can build up chords using the intervals popover that way, which can be very useful. Um, I seem to have skipped over one. I'm not sure how I did that, but there you go. So. 
The intervals popover is quite useful. If you want to use different note heads while you've got something selected, if you right click, you can go to note head and you've got all sorts of different choices of different types of note heads you can have. So let's have some moon note heads. There we go. Um, so if you want to choose, I'm not sure why you'd want to in that case, but you can. There's also in the properties panel at the bottom. Um, now I've got some other items selected, so let me uh, let me get rid of those. I don't need those. I just want some note heads. Um, you can also do things like say I just want stemless notes. Uh, and I know what some people have done is gone. I would like stem. Oh, is any split stem? It's not here because you need to be in engrave mode. And if you're in engrave mode and you're searching for stem, then you'll find hide stem. So if you want stemless notes, then you can just turn the stems off for any selected notes. But you need to be in engrave mode. And I think that was, I don't know when it was, Anthony, but that was a Tips Tuesday. Um, just having a quick look at um, the, the comments. It's been almost 20 minutes since he last took a proper breath. Thanks. Thanks very much. <laughs> uh, Delius was blind later in his life, so he won't see what you're doing. Cool. Uh, yes, I don't it, yeah. Uh, intervals popover is my favourite. Okay, that's that's very good. If you add multiple notes for four horns, then swap the middle horns is additionally useful. It is. Although, um, what you can also do is, if you, in setup mode, drag the horns into a different order, then you can input the notes in the right order, potentially, for the... Um, <laughs> you can input the notes in the right order the, at the same time. I've just seen Anthony's comment. Thanks. One of your top five discovered Orico presenters. Yeah, thank you. Ah, oh, right. I'm going to carry on. I'm. Uh, you, yeah. Uh, if you don't like this anymore, feel free to listen all the way till the end. Uh, other. How, how many have we done so far? Is anybody keeping keeping tabs? No, I don't know. Uh, so, um, Ossias. If you need an Ossia staff. Again, you probably don't want this on strings, it's more piano, but you know, you can do it any way you like. If you right click in the staff section here, you can do create Ossia above or below. So you can add a little Ossia staff like a chink. Oh, and then it reformatted the page as it was doing it. There we go. Now that one doesn't fit. Dorico's reformatted the page. But you can add an Ossia and you can see some little signposts that Dorico is telling you here's how big it is. You can change the size if you want. Uh, if you are inputting notes, and I did this with uh, a student uh, last week, I think, where they uh, prefer when they're inputting notes, what we often do is we say choose the um, the, dur uh, the duration and then into the pitch. So I've chosen the duration and then I press G, for example. But if you want to switch it the other way around, there's an extra button here so that you can toggle it around the other way. So now I can say G, or if actually, for me, usefully on a MIDI keyboard, I can play note, you know, chords and choose exactly what I want, and then choose the duration later once I've actually decided what the one is I want. So uh, there's a toggle as well, which is just the letter K, so you can toggle this on and off. So even though I don't use it very often, and you can set this as your default option in the preferences, K will let you toggle that um, between the two. Um, there's a... I'm not going to show a lot of these, but there's a playing techniques option. A huge number of playing techniques, probably one of the most abused sections of Dorico really because you can make playing techniques for all sorts of things because there's an editor for it. So if you just click plus you can make your own playing techniques. They can be all sorts of things. You know, it could be text, they can be symbols, they can be anything you like. And you can also attach them to playback. So if you want to make your own techniques and assign them to something in, uh, an, uh, uh, in an expression map then you can also do that. And if you have particular um, techniques that maybe for some reason they just need to be you know, just for playback, then there's also, when you choose a playing technique like this muted here, you can uh, also make it hidden. So if you don't want to see it from the score, then you can just get it to affect playback. Um, I'm not entirely sure why that one's in this section, but anyway, it is. So the repeats pop over. Um, this one, I noticed somebody the other day said, this is one of my favourites, I really like this. And I'll admit, it's really, really handy. If you choose a bar and press Shift-R and just type End, then you get a first and second time uh, repeat ending and a repeat bar. Um, but the repeats popover can also be used for a bunch of other things that we'll come on to in just a second. Honestly, I won't go on all day, I promise. Um, let's speed up a bit. Um, miss out a couple because... I'm going to be here all day otherwise, but a couple of do ones I do want to show you are... Have I already used 
This one, yes. So if you're doing things like um, piano pedaling, you've entered a piano pedal line and you need to add retakes. Select a note and when you do shift P, just enter the little retake symbol, which is shift six on my keyboard, and you'll get a pedal line retake. If you are doing music for harp, then there are various schools of thought as to whether you should or shouldn't add the harp pedaling. Uh, whether you should or shouldn't, Dorico will show you red notes if you don't have them. And they are effectively the notes out of range, because if with no harp pedal, the, these notes are out of range. So if you choose all of the notes that you want to use, go to right, mode, uh, to right menu and calculate harp pedals, you can put in a harp pedal diagram. But it won't display on the score, it'll just tell you it's there. And when you skip to the part, you can then see the, uh, the harp pedaling. And if you want to show a diagram instead, then you can do that in layout options. You can go to players and you can get a harp pedaling and you can toggle the diagram instead. And at least then you know how often your harpist is going to have to change pedaling and whether or not things are playable. Whether you actually want to show these for the harpist, I think actually they might like you more, but that, that depends on you and your harpist. Um, in a very quick section on tuplets, Dorico will guess things for you a bit as well. So if you've already entered notes, I noticed Anthony called this one tupletify, which I think is a made-up word, but anyway. If I press the tuplets button over here, or the shortcut, which is semicolon, then Dorico will guess what the ratio is. So it's going to guess that that's 3-2, which is fine. If you have a tuplet already, then and you click on the number and press delete, then Dorico will unmake those tuplets. So you don't have to delete the notes, re-enter them as tuplets. You can just uh, uh, add the tuplets or delete them later on. You'll get different results if you're using insert mode. Give it a try. If you want to do very large tuplets, for example these ones here, these are 24 in the time of 22, and I've then hidden everything because on this particular piece they're not showing you what the tuplet is, but you can do ratios of just about anything you like. Um, the If you have things overlapping each other, we don't here, I have seen this in somebody's question on Facebook the other day. Yes, who was it? I can't remember. I Sorry, I can't remember who it was. Um, they said when they had things overlapping, so let's say, let's make one up here. So in engrave mode, if we've got a couple of text markings overlapping each other, uh, uh, Dorico can be clever, isn't it? Not do it. If they're overlapping each other, hold down Alt and Shift, and then you can select the items that are underneath, underneath each other. Sometimes useful if you have a signpost and some text overlapping, that kind of thing, uh, you can use that. and So you can actually choose the, the option that you want behind it. Um, a couple of things just on... We better look at a different style for a second. So... T Anthony did some Tips Tuesdays on slashes and guitar notation type stuff. So... Slash regions, which are the shift R popover we've already used, they can be put over the top of existing music and can hide the music underneath. So when you go into play mode, the notes are still going to be here, they will still play, but the slash region will cover them up so you don't need to see them on the score. If you delete the slash region, the notes will come back and they will be displayed as well. Um, also chord symbols, and this has come up a couple of times recently on the forum and Facebook, is when you go into setup mode, if you right click on your player, you can choose whether or not the chord symbols will display for that player. So this was a lead synth voice, it wouldn't normally have had the chord symbols. But just for the solo section, so just in the slash region, and you can have a chord symbol region as well, you can show chord symbols just in the slash region so that they are shown in there. Um, you can also split slash regions because sometimes that's easier for editing things. So very, very similar to when we were splitting tide notes earlier. You click where you want it to happen and you press the letter U, which is this scissors tool over here, and it will split. And I don't know if you can tell, but this is a very slight different shade of green. This is a, uh, a light green, this is a darker green. So that can be very useful. There's also, um, when you're using slashes, I mentioned earlier, so I won't do it again, but you can select notes or you can add a slash voice. In fact, there's a very quick reason to do this. Um, when you're making voices, you use Shift V to make a voice. Only use V when you need to toggle the available voices. But also in right mode, you can go to create slash voice as well instead of create voice, which will give you a slash. So now if I want to put some uh, a couple of notes in here, then they'll just come up as slashes. 
And what you'll end up with here is sort of sometimes extra rests. So it's a useful way to say if you click on these extra rests, there's an edit option here for remove rests. I use it a lot. I've set myself a shortcut. You may want to do the same. So you can remove extra rests. So I think that's covered at least two or three Tips Tuesdays very quickly. Um, if you're showing guitar tab notation, so here we've got two uh, two guitars. Yes, two guitars. One in tab and one that isn't. So when you go into your layout options for players, you can choose your fretted instruments and you can choose for each guitar and the bass guitar, do you want tab or notation or both? So you can say, actually, I'd like both. Maybe one with rhythms and one without. Let's have the bass with tab and rhythms. So you can switch all around. It's just for this layout, so just in the full score. You may also want to apply this to some of the parts, depending on what you need. Um, so now my guitar part here is showing me both tab and uh, notation for both of them, and my bass part is only showing me tab. So you can switch those um, uh, either way, however you need them to be. I've almost finished, honest. Um, if you have, because there's a whole section, which I won't do, honest, on video, you can add video to a, to a Dorico file, you can write music to picture, you can write music to video. So. If you're writing music, I just wait for the file to look, oh, and the video file. There's a lot of comments today, I'm quite pleased. But it's, and, and I'd also like to say, say thank you to Daniel for answering a lot of the questions that are in the comments. And uh, Anthony, I'm sure he did answer the comment, answer the questions as well as ribbing me about things. Oh, I'm sure I just clicked on a file and now I'm waiting for Dorico. That doesn't happen very often. Is it possible that I'm quicker than Dorico is? Surely not. I'm just quicker than my computer right now. It's trying to do a live stream. Right. Here it is. Ah, oh, yes, somebody's just pointed out. Yes, I keep mentioning Facebook, but yes, there are also Dorico groups in other languages. So there's a Portuguese, and there's a French, and a German, and a Dutch. Italian, they yeah, have various other pages if you want to join them. Anyway, so here we have a file which already has video attached. You add it from the setup menu, you right click on your flow, you can go video attach. This one already has a video, fantastic. Um, this one, of course, if you play this score, if I uh, choose this one and press play, then it will. This one's very rubato in play mode. Um, just, just uh, so you know, I've, I've, I've added in all of the, the, the tempo changes in, in, in play mode. I don't know if that's one of Anthony's um, tips, but there you go, it, it is now. Um, if you want to make a PVG uh, layout, I know this is one. So in setup mode, so PVG being piano vocal guitar. So I'm going to add a new part down here, choose my part, and then I'm going to say I want the singer and the piano. So. I'm going to right click on this, I'm going to say PVG for piano, vocal, guitar, I'm going to choose my new part, here I have a new part. And then one of, his, one of the other tips that Anthony said was if you go into uh, layout options, chord symbols and diagrams, you can show chord diagrams used in this project at the start of the flow. So I'm going to apply that to this part, so now I have my little um, frame here. You can also tell the chords to sit at the top if you want to, um, and you could show you could show the, the chord diagrams here, but you wouldn't normally do it as well as these ones here. But it's just a neat little option that you can turn on for that. Uh, you can copy and paste lyrics in, so this one I think already has all the lyrics, yes, but if you have a text file, you can, as well as writing in the lyrics in here in the popover, you can copy and paste them from a text file. You can also edit them, so you can press enter and edit these, you know, as you'd expect, and enter each um, lyric as you go, but if you also if you right click and go to lyrics and edit line of lyrics, then you can edit the whole line. So you could say, for example, uh, for I can't help falling in love with you, if you said I uh, want to live my whole life. I mean, it feels like this session obviously has been your whole life, and I apologise for that. Um, but you see, the the target number of lyrics is now the same. So when I press OK, it's OK, and it will change the lyrics. Here we go. I want to live my whole life with you. So you can you can edit things that way as well if you want to. There's also translation lines for lyrics. 
uh, the, if you need to add a translation line for one of the verses. And when you're doing selections, one of my favorite things really is select more. So if I select one item in this bar and press select more, which does exist in the edit menu over here. So you can have various select options, but select more, shift command A or control if you're on PC. When I press that, it selects more of the same item in this bar. And if I press it again, same shortcut, it selects it in that system. And if I press it again, then it will select the lyrics all the way through that the, the piece. It's the same for notes. If I choose a note, I press select more, it selects the ones in that chord. If I press select more, it's the ones in that bar in that voice. If I press it again, then it's also choosing the ones in that voice. See, it's it, I press it again, it's going all the way through the part now. So it's choosing things based on the, the type of thing you've already selected. So it's it's very, very useful for all sorts of things. Select more. Um, well, that, that is a use it every day one. Um, to finish, I am going to be honest, playback very quickly. Somebody asked about this the other day because they couldn't find it. And it is in um, some of uh, Anthony's Tips Tuesday videos. So you've got um, various playback options. If you've got something selected, you can press P and it will play from that point. If you have um, the, this is a, this piece has a video in, on it as well. So if you want to go into the, uh, the play section and show playhead when stopped, then do, 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 do. you can also show the green line even when it's not playing, which can be useful then to show you what happens with some of the other uh, shortcuts and things. Whoa. My computer's grind grinding to a halt doing a live stream as well. It'll get there in a minute. Come on, Dorico. Come on, computer. I'll just wind the handle a bit quicker. But it can be really useful also if you're doing things to markers. I'm not going to do that today, don't worry. Um, so I've got the playhead. If I use the space bar now, then the playhead will carry on from this point. This is the audio from the video you're hearing, by the way, and so you can mute that in the mixer if you don't want it. So the spacebar now is moving the playhead on and pausing the, the playhead. Pressing P again will go from this point here. If I was to say, so if I press P, I'm going from there again. If I now make an edit over here and do something over here, I've made a selection. But if I press Shift spacebar, then it will go from the previous play position, which can be very useful, but also shift alt spacebar will go from the very, very beginning of the flow. Anthony's video also said there are numeric keypad playback controls. So if you have a numeric keypad, and if you hover over these buttons up here, then it says rewind to beginning of flow is the number pad uh, dot button. And there's also uh, play, which you can also do from the number pad as well. So if you use Cubase or a door, then you, you will find that the numeric keypad on your computer will do very, very similar playback options for that. You can also do things like click on the little time option up here. So right at the top up here, if you click on the time, you can show seconds or frames or bars and beats. Um, you can also do the same in the transport control window, which is on my other monitor. Here it is. So you can uh, click on these and display these in different options as well. I've done that. So lastly, you want to print it, of course. So. In Dorico, you get the full page preview of, of what you're doing, and you can export things. But if you've said that the full score, for example, is being printed, and the piano part is going to a graphic, for example, then when you hold down Shift and select more than one layout, then the button at the bottom is Print and Export. So the tip is, it just it's one click to print and export, do all of the batches of everything. And the very last thing is that if you need the same sized graphic, small excerpt graphic of something uh, over and over again, then you can go into here into graphic slices in, in engrave mode. And if I click on create slice and I can make a slice, which will be a red box like this one, then it now has defined this size. So I can export this as a graphic and I can choose PDF and I can choose PNGs and resolutions for those. Um, but it's always the same size. So now if the music changes in the middle and I re-export it, I'll get exactly the same size graphic. So if you're putting that in another publication and you need the graphic always to be the same size, then that's that one. Now I think that, oh, I don't know, anybody counted? I must be 80 something, but there are 150 Tips Tuesdays. So if you like any of those options, don't take them all in now, not possible. But you can Google for any of those and you can find those or go to our blog, blog.dorico.com, which was here, 
uh, and you can click on tutorials and you can find them all in this section here. But no, the, uh, yes, the how to wish you wish Dorico its happy birthday itself on an iPad. So there's all sorts of uh, uh, very useful tips in there on the Tips Tuesday, and I just wanted to highlight them all. So here's a really yeah, long, sorry, session on highlighting all of those. But what are your favourite features? I quite like to know. You, the comments for this video are going to carry on for a little bit. You can add um, comments underneath the video if you want to, or get in touch with us on Facebook. Tell us, you know, what are your favourite uh, features in Dorico? But more importantly, tell your friends. Um, the, we would obviously love more people to be using Dorico and to share the information about all of these lovely things that you can do in Dorico and the time-saving features that exist in Dorico. So, yeah, just uh, tell your friends what your favourite features are. And if nothing else, the first, it's probably only five minutes, of the video with kind of the, the top useful things in Dorico, share those with them um, so they can see why you, you really like it. So hopefully you learned something in this session. It's a long one, but I will now re-watch it all myself and put time links underneath the video. So if you want to come back to this, in fact, when did he talk about, I am going to put a very long list of time links underneath in the description of this video. So if you're not watching it live, have a look in the description and you'll be able to jump to all sorts of things that are shown in this video. Uh, but thank you for watching and uh, we'll aim to, do, aim to do one of these a month. Um, so what would you like in the next section? I could cover all of the other features that we haven't done in the Tips Tuesday yet. I'm joking, not, not a chance. But uh, tell me, what, what would you like an in-depth session on a, something in particular? Do you have a, you know, a particular problem, a particular example that you think would be useful to show in one of these sessions? I'd love to know. So um, please come back and uh, watch the Discover Dorico sessions. And if, if you're just starting out learning Dorico and all of that was a bit of a whirlwind, I apologise, but there are videos on all of these things in depth available on our YouTube channel. So, <laughs> it was one of the longest sessions. Yeah, it was. Sorry about that. Uh, but yes, I mean, it's it's not even a tour of Dorico Features, that. That's only a tour of Anthony's Tips Tuesday. So look out next Tuesday for Anthony's next tip. There is one a week. Um, so thank you all for joining this session, and uh, until next time, Bye.